Hi friends, welcome back with new amazing video from Top Movies Recap. Today I'm going to recap a 2004 war and drama film titled Hotel Rwanda Spoiler Warning, Watch Out and Take Care. The film begins with Paul and Du driving a van to George to sell Cohiba cigars. Paul declined George's invitation to attend the Hunu rally. A container of machetes dropped while they were in the storeroom. George took the knife and told Paul about the great deal he got in China. Dube informs Paul on the vehicle that George Rudigana is a wicked man and he orders Hudis to kill all the Tutsis over the radio. Paul, on the other hand, does not believe it and regards their connection with George as a business transaction. Hudu rally is taking place as they travel. Dube was apprehensive since some of his Tutsis were present. When Paul was identified and was about to be harassed, he pulled out the shirt George had given him and declared Hudu power. Only then did the men go. The youngsters were scribbling on their papers at their house when his kid ran up to them and yelled, there are soldiers on the street. Paul walked outside to check what was going on and saw their next door neighbor being harassed by the military and dragged away. It is stated that the Belgians were the ones who divided the Tutsis and Hutus by selecting people who met their aesthetic criteria. The Belgians utilized Tutsis to rule the country but handed the Hutus authority, allowing them to avenge themselves for years of tyranny at the hands of the Tutsis. General Bizamungu was interviewed on TV and asked if they were training the military and if the army fully supported the president in his choice to make peace with the rebels, which he verified. On that day in Tanzania, a peace accord between Tutsi rebel groups and President Habermana will be signed. Colonel Oliver gives a speech in the lobby on the peace deal that is currently being signed. They're all happy because they've achieved peace. His in-laws, though, paid him a visit in the hotel late at night. They claimed their friend advised him to leave right away since the situation would quickly deteriorate. Paul was driving home when he noticed houses on fire and military trucks patrolling the streets, warning people to stay inside. There was a power outage when he arrived. He locates his wife only to see his entire neighbor in the room, all armed. Tachana and their neighbors informed him that the president had been assassinated and that houses in their neighborhood were on fire. The next day, gunshots can be heard coming from their home. When they were listening to the news, it was established that the president had been assassinated and the order to cut down the tall trees was given. Paul became worried at the same time. Soldiers have arrived at their residence. Paul bravely went out to speak with them, only to be accosted by radicals. They checked his identification and discovered that he is a hoodoo. Paul was eventually able to persuade the soldiers to bring his entire family and neighborhood with them. Corpses can be observed along the path as well as rallies. Paul took them to the safe to obtain the keys when they arrived at the diplomat hotel. He came into some cash and decided to keep it. When he was found attempting to obtain additional money, he was forced to hurry. He was slapped severely after entrusting the keys to the military. For keeping Tutsis with him, he is branded a traitor. Paul was able to bribe him, but it was insufficient for everyone. When they arrived at the Mill Collines Hotel, he tried to persuade him to pay so they could collect more money. Paul was able to securely transport them to the hotel once the militant consented. The panic is palpable among the motel guests. While there are many evacuees surging on the hotel, foreigners are demanding for their passports. Paul arranged for them to have a suite room as well as some of their neighbors to join them in the staff area. When Paul inquired about Gregoire, the staff at the hotel was very busy. Paul preached in the presidential room and told him to get back to work, but he was threatened that if he didn't, the militant would deal with the Tutsis in the hotel. Paul is powerless. When further evacuates are brought to the hotel, Paul is quite busy dealing with the visitors. After picking them up, the lady informed him that another one will arrive later. In a desperate attempt to save them all, Paul urged her to accompany him to his in-law's residence. When he arrived at the hotel room of the international journalists, their colleague ran in and played a recording. There are innumerable bodies on the ground and countless people who have been slain there. This was something the journalist wanted to write about. The journalist then apologized to Paul for showing the tape, but Paul expressed his gratitude. He reasoned that if anyone witnessed, they would interfere. However, the journalist disagreed. People will merely sympathize with words according to him and then return to their previous activities. Paul went back to work. The next day, while the journalists are recording, additional refugees arrive at the hotel. A tiny truck carrying Hudas pulled up alongside them, threatening them and throwing the UN soldier's helmet. The colonel protested to Paul about the ten soldiers he had lost while defending the lady prime minister, but they had all perished. The UN is sending an intervention force which will arrive in a few days, Colonel told Paul. On another day, the UN army arrived and people rejoiced, believing they would be saved from the misery they are living in. But much to Paul's dismay, the colonel informed him that they would only be rescuing hotel guests. They don't stay to halt the massacre since they don't think they're valuable. The foreigners' passports were returned and they proceeded to the bus station to board. 
All that is left behind is filled with despair, and those that are able to flee are shrouded in shame. Nuns and priests appeared out of nowhere, bringing orphans and children. They were obliged to separate and leave the children at the hotel, despite their desire not to do so. When night fell, Tachana informed Paul that he should depart since he is at Hudu and that he and their children would be secure in his company. They'll kill 100 things and 800 people in the time they have. He thanked the man, but when he was told that he had to put him on hold, he did. While he was on the phone with the French, the boss urged Paul to buy time. Paul followed orders. The radicals were enraged when he provided them the guest list from two weeks ago. Since there were no more Europeans in the area, the militants believed Paul was deceiving them. The militant was suddenly ordered to withdraw. Same as president called to inform Paul that he had begged with the French and Belgians to return and rescue them, but that they had refused. Paul can only accept the president's apologies. Paul informed them of their fate and advised them to contact everyone they knew abroad to inform them of their situation and bid them farewell. However, when he told them, he advised them to send messages that were heartfelt enough to make them feel awful if they did nothing to help them. General Bizamungu is served at the table by Paul. The general brought up the subject of white people abandoning Paul but assured him that he would be taken care of. Paul requested that the general provide them with police officers for their protection, but the general just responded that the police were overburdened. The general was persuaded. After that, Paul praises the general and manipulates him to attack Gregoire, forcing Gregoire to return to his duties. Paul had Gregoire accompany him to George to get provisions before dawn. Many Tutsi women are naked and locked in a cage like animals at the camp. When George came, Paul briefed him about his company. George tried to persuade Paul to join them, but all Paul said was that it was almost morning and that they had to leave. George advised them to walk by the river because it is clean. Their cars are bouncing so much at the river and it can't see due of the fog. Paul requested that Gregoire pull over to the side of the road. Paul was able to see the road and why their car was bouncing so much as the sky lightened and the fog thinned. He returned to his van after seeing numerous dead on the road. He returned to the hotel after telling Gregoire not to tell anyone about what they observed. Paul is frantic as he returns to the motel. He had a nervous breakdown because he could not his tie properly. He invited his wife to join him for a drink on the rooftop at night. They rubbed their lips together. They were having a good time when Paul brought up the militia. He instructed her to flee to the rooftop and leap. Tatiana stated that she was unable to do so, but Paul pleaded with her and she simply hugged him. The UN arrived the next morning, telling them that their calls had been heard and that they would rescue the families on the list. They eagerly awaited their names to be called. Those that were summoned can depart today. The colonel assured those who were left behind that another jet would arrive. This instills a sense of optimism among the general public. Paul's family is on the list and they can depart. Paul implored Lady Archer to save his nieces once again. She consented, if reluctantly. He did, however, request that she return before 7 a.m. so that they may assist the rescue effort. Families are packing their belongings and boarding trucks to go. When Paul was about to board, he paused and instructed a man to inform his wife that he would not be departing. He can't bear the thought of abandoning the people. Everything was going swimmingly until Gregoire revealed the news of the rescue to the Hudis. Hudis obstructed their progress by blocking the road. When Paul learned of the news, he requested that General Bizamungu rescue them, which he did. The Hudis surrounded the trucks and bloodshed ensued. Tachana and the others are able to return home, but Taishiana is furious at Paul. Paul has apologized to her and the two have reconciled. The general requested a trade for his services, but Paul was unable to provide him with any additional supplies. This is the final time the general will assist him, he said. He can no longer use Paul. Paul noticed someone shooting a rocket towards the hotel late at night. He ordered his wife to lie down while he went to the hotel to find out what was going on. He rode a military truck with the general to the diplomat hotel in the morning to offer him the tradable items he had. Paul demanded from the general that they return to the hotel and save the people. Although he was apprehended, the military was dispatched to save him. He looked for his wife on the rooftop where he had advised her to hide and jump but he couldn't find her. He returned to his room and searched the restroom. His wife and children were there in the bathroom when he opened the shower curtain. More refugees are camped there. They continued looking for their in-laws and nieces until they were instructed to board the bus. Lady Archer noticed a child from the hotel and realized that the residents are capable of fleeing. She pursued the bus and drew Tachana's attention as it was leaving. They were able to locate their nieces and boarded the bus after she told them to hurry. Despite the fact that they were able to locate their nieces, their parents were never discovered. Humans do not benefit from war, it only delivers death and suffering, as well as a legacy of hatred that spans generations. We hope you enjoyed our video from today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications of new and interesting videos.